Hey guys, Jay Hoyt here. Before we get into today's video, I just want to say another big thank you guys for all the support you guys are showing on the channel. You guys have been absolutely showing like so much kindness. I got to say thank you, but as always guys, enjoy the video. <music> What's going on guys, Jay Hoyt back with you today, welcome back to episode number 7 of our franchise mode with the Buffalo Sabres. Now before we get into it, we had a little bit of mic issues the last little bit, so we haven't been uploading any videos recently. We tried one, but I wasn't super happy with the audio quality, we had to use the webcam mic. But now we got the new mic in. It's actually the same one I had. Uh, we reordered it cheap enough for what I need. It works perfect. But jumping into our franchise mode, if you guys don't remember where we're at, we are sitting halfway through the year. We currently sit at 38 points, just four points out of a playoff spot. So that's something we have to look out for, right? Um, yeah, four points out of a playoff spot. We're close enough, but... There's a huge but here. We have a trade. Yep, yeah, that's right. We have a trade. And it's actually a pretty good size trade as well. Um, last episode, we had mentioned wanting to address some of the holes in our team. And when we look at those holes in our team, you look at our, our forwards, we're pretty solid throughout. Right? We have the young talent. We have the young wingers. We have a solid center core. We have a fourth line that's doing well. We're pretty set there. Now, of course, some of our lines are not really, you know, gelling. So we did try to switch that up. Uh, so we did sw uh, swap some of those guys around. But on defense, this is where, you know, I was worried when the when we first kind of started this Buffalo franchise mode. And we knew we were going to have Darlene. We knew we were going to have Owen Power. But after that, what were we going to have on our right defensive side? Now, we did make some trades, some signings. And everything else but that just isn't enough right we have the young goaltenders we have the young forwards but we need to get a little bit younger on the back end and what we're going to do there is actually go look for a right shot defenseman now when we look for a right-handed shot defenseman we could go to arizona which i know you guys don't you know really care about scrolling through all these screens but we could go to arizona get prep a uh, brett pesci which is always a solid pick we could go to Boston and get Brandon Carlo, which again is a solid pickup. We could go to Colorado, which I still might do, and go get Josh Manson, who's not even playing for them. Or we could go look later on in the uh, trading block and see what else is out there. So I did that. right After last episode, I spent the next good hour or so scrolling through teams, seeing what's available so we could give up and kind of see what pieces would make sense to keep, to get rid of. And we were doing lots of work behind the scenes, making those phone calls to the other GMs saying, this is what I got. This is what I'm looking for. What would you be willing to give up? And I feel like we have a pretty solid trade. And at least on paper, you know, at least in the video game makes a lot of sense. In real life right now, it would not. A little bit of a hint, but not really. So we go to our back end, right? We get to our right defenseman. And this one, we're actually going to be getting rid of both Yoki Haru and Jan Ruda. So that will free up a decent amount of money. Now, in this trade, I didn't really love giving up Yoki Haru. But I don't know if this is going to go through or not. But being 26, you're under a little bit of a contract. But what we're getting, we kind of have to trade something right and in this case i didn't really feel like giving up dumba just because like i feel like he's doing better than the other two so both these guys also uh ruda being 35 years old definitely uh helped out with this trade so both of those guys along with a center prospect so a center prospect here uh Wahlberg else long or as well as i should say a third round draft pick from way down the line right that's a pretty good chunk of, of 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 a package if you will and where we're going right like i said we went to arizona we, we saw i mean we could just show you quick here but we saw brett pesci here right but he's still got four years left then we went to boston to get brandon carlo which again two years left 85 overall 29 years old is all solid 
except for, you know, Boston is Boston. Usually they end up making a run. And then the other player we were looking at as we went through here is Josh Manson, who is not even playing the last time I checked for Colorado. So he was another one that I thought about getting, and I still may end up getting him uh, depending on what we feel about the rest of our, our team and, you know, what we kind of want to do later on because they have a lot of defensemen. And if an 83 overall defenseman isn't playing, you know, we might be able to steal that away. But the one trade we did find is over to the Minnesota Wild. And you already might be able to see where this one is going. But this one, I would say it's the headliner, but it's really not. The headliner is down here in Brock Faber. So, of course, he is arguably... Uh, a finalist, or I should say probably is a finalist for the Calder Trophy in real life. Of course, 82 overall, 23 years old. He's got solid stats, fits all of our defensive pairs. You know, is under contract for the next three years at a great salary. For some reason, he's not even playing for them. Why, I don't know. But him, as well as Dylan DeMello, who is not going to be much more than a shutdown right defenseman. He fits on our team. He's got one more year left at $3 million, which I wasn't a super, you know, big fan of. But still, like, we're, we're still running low. Or not even running low, but we don't really have a lot of salary on our books. So I wasn't really too worried. So uh, DeMello and Faber. Somehow DeMello has more sal um, trade value than Faber. Uh, but both of those guys, as well as a prospect, just to kind of um, balance out the numbers more than anything and his name is Petrowski. Uh, that is this guy. So he is a 74 overall, 21 over, uh, 21 year old uh, center who, you know, doesn't have a lot of trade value, which is why I was kind of attracted uh, towards him in the game. And getting rid of uh, Wahlberg, which I don't really think I mentioned too much, um, but he actually does have some trade value and. You know, a center, he's a power forward. He was a former second round pick. Not really doing too hot down there in two years, playing like the third line. Hasn't really put it together. I know he's playing behind some other, you know, pretty good talent. Um, but, you know, we have some other centers there that we still have to sign. You know, Hulse is up here as well. So we have some good young talent there. We've drafted pretty well. So I didn't really have a problem with, uh, with giving up Wahlberg in this one. Or, yeah, Wahlberg. So on paper, it looks like it's pretty even. However, what does the Minnesota GM say? No. All right, so we had to switch some things around. We ended up having to give up a first round draft pick, but we did get back a, what was it? A third round draft pick from this year, as well as another unsigned prospect in the whole deal. So we tried to nickel and dime it as much as we could. And although I probably should have asked for a second, just to kind of see if that went through. But even then we got a good uh, trade value there in my opinion. You know, we upgrade our defense dramatically, and I'm very excited to get these guys in the lineup. But following the trade, we've officially got these guys into the lineup. We fixed all the special teams, and I am ready to get on with the rest of the year. So we didn't make any of their moves other than, of course, the roster changes and the, the acquisitions there. So 38 points. Like I said, we're four off of a big playoff spot. Let's get into these. It's not really a bye week, but into this uh, little bit of a stretch after uh, this run of games. So we got the overtime loss. We got a win in there. We just need to win more than we lose. That's all That's all we got to do here, right? And we'll, and we'll end up getting in. So I think we're already up there tied uh, with the playoffs. Well, at least we were for a second uh, before we decided to lose everything. So we got to get a good run of games here, right? That will kind of determine what the rest of our year looks like and what kind of moves we need to make to focus on next year because we got some work to do. 27-24. So we're, we're playing really like 500 hockey right now, like badly. So we're at 54 points. We're okay. We're still four points off. We could do it here with this, these couple of four, like was that four games there? Overtime loss, we get a point at least. So that's just a normal loss. Didn't see that, and we got a win there. So 58, we're still four points off. Oh, boy, what do we even do here? Like, do we try to make trades? Do we try to just hold on? I'm trying to think of what I could even do. Well, in order to make a splash, we got to do something that I don't really love doing, and that's trading away a young goaltender. But in this case, we kind of need to. So... 
What I found on the trade block, by the way, is a goaltender, Freddie Anderson, from the Carolina Hurricanes. And it looks like he kind of lost the starting spot to the other guy. And he's got one year left, $6 million, no extension. And I feel like if we can get a year, maybe two out of him, I would be pretty happy. If not, let him walk in the offseason, maybe trade him at the draft, do something. But it would help us out in the the short term. But in order to do that, we got to give up Lukanen. And he just hasn't been it, right? Ever since we kind of took over, he was the starter. You know, he was okay, but not great. Still didn't do well. Backing up last year, didn't do well. This year, he's just not doing well. So I know we're not in a great spot. He's still got some potential there. He's 26 years old, 83 overall. So he's still there a little bit. I mean, will this end up giving Carolina, you know, a really good duo? Maybe. But in the meantime, we need to win. So I've offered up a third round pick here uh, as, uh, for a fourth round pick and Anderson here. So will that go through? No. So I figured that wouldn't. But um, if we can get some kind of other draft pick back, I wouldn't be too upset about it. So potentially final trade, looking in a third for Anderson, and there we go. So Freddie Anderson, welcome to the team. Uh, you'll end up being our backup goalie, or not even backup goalie, because they're both the same overall. So we'll get him into the lineup. We'll scroll through the trade uh, block some more. See if there's anything out there that would help us. And if not, we'll get on through the rest of the year. Well, following the trade deadline here, we didn't make any other moves, mainly because I didn't really see anything else out there that I thought could make our team better. And what I mean by that is I saw some pieces, right? There was a couple of wingers, uh, David Perron, Jordan Eberle. But in order to acquire those players, I had to trade away like Jack Quinn, uh, Casey Middlestat, players like that. And I didn't really want to do that, right? I wanted to keep our core together and go from there. So as far as the rest of the season outlook here, we sit at, where are we? 58 points, which means we are six points out of a playoff spot and fighting with one, two, three, four, five, six, it's like seven other teams, but only like half of our conference. It's fine. All right. Well, we're going to have to go week by week, kind of play this, uh, you know, strategically, I guess, no matter what, get points. As, as, as easy as it sounds, get points. And like I said, with that, we shot right up. So 68 points, we are sitting in a wild card spot now. And it looks like we are not going to catch the other wild card spot at 76 points, at least not for a bit. So we have one, two, three, four, five six seven i'll say teams still fighting for a playoff spot so that's why we're gonna move around a good bunch but if we keep doing what we're doing right now winning those games and keep getting points you know we'll put ourselves in a good spot as soon as they said that though we lost two straight games um so yeah that's where we're sitting so we're, we're still close we're gonna have to jump you know three games at a time here we gotta get points that's all we need overtime loss so any loss right now is huge. So we're basically fighting for that second wild card spot. So we're four points off. That Boston game is pretty big. So we need wins. That does not help us. So we need to beat Boston here. Let's beat them. Nope, we didn't do that. So 76 points. Still within reach. But not in a great spot especially when we're losing games so 70 points i mean it's gonna be really hard to get in now so they're at 80 yeah we still we basically need to win out i think because like we're close but 10 to 1 win geez all right so we still could make it but yeah we need to win out and hope for a lot of other people's downfall that's for sure uh, with that loss, I would probably guess that means we are out of contention. I would assume. I mean, I'm not going to go enough to check the standings, but I mean, with that, definitely, yeah. So, yep, so playoff seeds are officially done. So, all right, so we are out of the playoffs, which sucks because I felt like we were kind of on the right track in the last little bit. So, 
That sucks, but I guess we'll call it a building year. So a huge year out of Thompson. Oh my gosh, 96 points, 54 goals. I mean, for a team that didn't do that well this year and were fighting for the last spot, I mean, that's an incredible year. Him and Skinner, and like I hate to say it, but if his trade value kind of skyrockets because of a really good year, it might be the time to trade him. Because I don't want to trade him when he starts to dip in overall and his trade value just tanks. I want to trade it while his value's high to get the most out of him. So Tuck with another solid year. Benz with a good year. Cousins with a good year. I mean, Quinn, 82 overall, but still a 60-point year. Defensively, we're struggling. Uh, Paterka, Krebs, both good years. Middle stat. You know, it's okay, but I'd still like a little bit more out of him. Pearson, Yost, uh, Sharon Govich. So we're doing okay. We're getting points in the power play. Obviously, we'll have to see the standings later on. But, I mean, so we started to play well towards the end. I mean, our top line, not so much plus minus wise. And for that favor, those stats are for what he played this year. I mean, 41 games. We got him halfway through the year. Six points minus 15. So we'll have to... You know, maybe evaluate what we want to do with, uh, you know, Dalian and Faber. Maybe we'll put him on the second line, put DeMello up on the first. I'm not sure. Um, Anderson, I'm not sure what you did with us. 7 1 and 3 actually had a really good stat line uh, for us. So we'll probably look to re sign him, honestly, to give Levi some competition. Uh, AHL wise, I mean, solid year out of both of our goaltenders. Um, defenseman. Did pretty well. Our 19-year-old, what was it, second overall, fifth overall pick, uh, did quite well. I mean, everyone else, all plus in the plus minus. Some solid guys up there. All our little top prospects are up there as well. So, solid year there. Let's go check out the team stats and see if there's any areas we really need to improve going on for next year. So, we finished in 20th place overall in the entire league with a final record of 39, 33, and 10. Um, so, where are we sitting here? So, Goals for 299. So we are sitting up there in goals. I mean, what is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 fit on the screen. We are in 8th there. So that's pretty good. However, we're also allowing a ton of goals. So we were bottom, I guess you want to call it, 5 in the league. So, I mean, we needed to do a heck of a lot better. So defensively, we need to be, be a, a million times better. That's for sure. Power play percentage, I didn't see what we're at. 20, 20, 20, I don't see us. But I would guess since we didn't do well, there it is. So 18.6%, so definitely not the greatest there. Where are we at here? 78.9%. We're towards the bottom there. That's not surprising. And then home and away, I guess we had six shorthanded goals for. But our records, you know, aren't great, but they're showing signs of improvement. So... Honestly, I don't think we have to change much, you know, going into to next year. You know, we have the team. We made some pretty good upgrades. Obviously, we're going to keep a lot of guys around. We'll have to see what Skinner's doing, you know, if we want to get rid of him, if his trade value is super high because we have one more year of him, you know, and then most likely we'll probably end up moving on from him just because, like, we have the young talent that are, are pushing their way up. And uh, we'll see what goes on from there. So just a positive outlook for the future. Our AHL team in the Rochester Americans have won the conference in the AHL with 92 points, 72 games played at the end of the year, 46, 22, and 4. Like I said, 92 points. It was not top of the league because there was a team with 98 points and obviously a couple other teams around there. But a really solid year for our young squad in the AHL. Savoy leading the way. Positive outlook for the future. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Buffalo Sabres franchise mode. I'd like to keep our team together, right? We made some good strides there at the end of the year. A couple tweaks here and there, and I feel like we're in a really good spot. But we'll have to wait till next episode. We'll get to the off season. We'll make sure we got the right tools in place for next year. And we'll be back better and hopefully make it to the playoffs. But as always, guys, if you did enjoy, hit the like button down below. If you haven't yet or if you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, we'll see you 